doing tonight. It has been one of those crazy, crazy days. And if you were near a TV set, you saw exactly the same thing that I saw. And it comes to a point where enough is absolutely enough. And I just want to say beyond it. I'm gonna, what is this on my screen here? I've got a bunch of crap on my screen. I'm going to take that stuff off. Anyway, um, yes. Welcome to the Gorgeous Short Show. It is about 10.35 Eastern Standard Time. Um, I had planned to do something. We, you know, we are always about comical stuff. and We do comedy, and that's what we do. But um, tonight it is a little bit more surreal, if you will. Um, comedy is what I'm about. But we get into these hot topics, especially we get into these topics when it comes to political stuff and whatnot. And I just want to put my two cents in. Whether you want to hear it or not, it just doesn't really matter to me. So we had an election, and there was a the amount of most people was the amount of the most people out of this election had actually had voted in this election. Over abundant amount of people had voted, and the Rust Belt states flipped back over to the Dems. Plus Arizona and Georgia went blue. Whoever thought that, Ge that Georgia would go blue? I knew Arizona was going to go blue. I called Arizona to go to blue, going to blue. Um, of course, you have Nevada that was in question. That was also a Hillary Clinton state back in 16. All that being said, it goes back to the fact that <clears throat> this president in office wasn't hearing none of it. And he wasn't going to budge, and he wasn't going to give the opposition any, any uh he wasn't going to hear none of it. Now, when I think about back in 2000 when Al Gore, when it was legitimate, when Al Gore legitimately won the presidency, and all they did was they took those, those votes and they put them in lockboxes and never really counted those votes. But Al Gore accepted the outcome of what had happened. Richard Milhouse Nixon back in 1961 when he first ran for president against John Fitzgerald Kennedy had the same deal and Richard Milhouse Nixon did the same thing but then they counted the votes in 61 and then they declared that John Fitzgerald Kennedy was the winner and was the president president back in the 60s and like I said in the year 2000 when there was any doubt any question of one state one state causing the problem it was Florida that caused the problem, and Albert Gore should have been the president of the United States. Votes being not counted for in lockboxes, never counted for, not one. Well, they eventually did go through some of them and rummage through some of them, but eventually it was, this, it was done past the time, and of course Al Gore, again, finally had to do the right thing. The only thing he could do was to accept the outcome. Hillary Clinton, in 16, lost. She lost the Rust Belt states in question, which Joe Biden went ahead and regained the Rust Belt states. Uh, she, won at, she won Nevada, which he also, you know, when Joe Biden took Nevada as well, and Arizona he picked up with Georgia. That was, the ter that was the change of the whole scenery for this year. But as disgruntled as Hillary was, she didn't go through this extreme. As disgruntled and and just disgusted and frustrated about the income in 16, Hillary didn't go through all this by trying to challenge democracy, challenge the people's will. So, so here we are. And now the shoe is on the other foot. And now everything is fraudulent. Everything is fraudulent upon this, everything is fraudulent upon that. And William Barr, who was the Attorney General to Mr. Trump, had said to himself, there was no funny business, there was no illegitimate way around against this election. So even his own Attorney General had stated this was a fair and clean election. And what does Trump do? He forces him to resign. He forces William Barr to resign. That's not the only part. 
if you go back into the cabinet, you go back into Trump's cabinet members. It's been a revolving door of people coming in and coming out. A lot of crooks coming in and coming out. And yet, these people still, you know, he's still like, you know, he pardoned a whole bunch of these people. But unlike any other president, the first thing you look at is the amount of cabinet members that resigned throughout his whole time. People coming in and coming out, a bunch of crooks. And the one disgustful thing, or distasteful thing that this guy, President Trump, did when he was uh, running in 16 was trying to stick it to Hillary by trying to attack former, former President Bill Clinton about the amount of women that he's had sex with. When the only difference between that is that President Trump had more uh, infidelity and more uh, sex with women, you know, that he had to pay off. He paid off a lot of them. Bill Clinton had only two encounters, only two people that he that he was messing with, and it finally came out. But Bill, the, the only difference between Bill, Bill Clinton and uh, Trump was Bill Clinton went ahead and he was very remorseful. He says, I want to go back and do my job, but he had owned up to the fact that he had extramarital affairs. I didn't really care about that. I don't really care about that with Trump. But the fact that Trump stuck it to Hillary by bringing those women in the debate, in one of those debates, pretty much that's where I lost respect for Trump when he did that. When he had his own skeletons in his own closet that needed to be accounted for, the only difference was he paid a whole, all the bunch of those women off throughout the, all those marital affairs that he had. Again, doesn't it, it amounts to nothing. Trump when he ran in 16 against the Republicans, the one thing he did was he was a time bomb ready to explode throughout the party. All these Billy Bobs and, and all these, and I'm just going to say it for what it is, all these Billy Bobs and these necks, the, you know, the, the white, uneducated, the white une, uneducated man start being, was attracted to the bravado of him. People, he has bravado, he has his character about him. I kind of liked the little bravado. I kind of liked the character of when he was on The Apprentice. I kind of liked his little, his little feuds with Rosie O'Donnell. But this man was a Democrat back in the 90s. He was very much a Democrat back in the 90s, and he flipped to parties. Because he couldn't win as a Democrat, first of all. And he'd always had pondered the thought about being running for president as a businessman. Ross Perot did it. Ross Perot did not get nearly enough attention because obviously Bill Clinton was the man for hire. Ross Perot didn't get enough attention because Ross Perot was looked for as, as this country bumpkin, which he was a country bumpkin. But, but, it, but it definitely knew what he was talking about. But most of his attacks were going on Bush. But Bill Clinton was the man for hire for two terms in the 90s. So that wasn't going to happen. So we did entertain that idea previously. So here we go with Donald J. Trump. And Donald J. Trump was the man that was was it was hired to be the president because a lot of people did, you know, a lot of the dismay uh, people that didn't care for Obama for whatever reason. I mean, Obama it was under Obama's ticket that unemployment went down. It was under Obama's ticket that more jobs were coming about, and unemployment was at its lowest. And the economy was turning. We can sit here and argue this point till the cows come home. Donald J. Trump inherited an economy that was turning for the better. Donald J. Trump inherited an economy that was turning for the better. That's a given fact. So you look at it for what it is. You look at the standpoint throughout his term. Everything was smooth. He didn't. She didn't rock the boat. You know. But he did some underhanded things. We know about the whole underhanded stuff he did, and then trying to you know go ahead and accuse Biden for doing stuff that was not. You know, accuse Biden for um, dealing with dealing with the foreign countries and with his son. When the all and the whole actuality was basically that. Quid, quid, 
quid pro quo. Okay? You know about it, quid pro quo. And you want to record, you want to try to influence a foreign leader to think a certain way. Come on now. And you know darn good and well that you were trying to influence that. The only intentions you knew, of course, you knew of all the Democrats that were running for president against Trump. And there was only one of those people that had a snowball's chance in hell in 2020 to win. And that was the one that won the election, Joseph R. Biden. You had all these people, they had the progressives, and you had the actual moderates who were in there. Joseph Biden was the only one that had the snowball chance in hell to win because you had this this following, the following the Trump's, Trump's following, though he did piss off a lot of people. He pissed off a black America, and he pissed off uh, the, he pissed off the Mexicans too. And build this wall, build this humongous wall. Well, that has never, that's not been completed, and they were still crawling up the wall, getting up on top of the wall. Now, this whole the thing in the summer of this past year where Black Lives Matter, you had Antifa, and you had a party. Well, let's go back even further than that, what happened in Charlottesville. What happened in Charlottesville, you had the extremist KKK, the Nazis, whatever, the, all these other crazy groups that caused mayhem and chaos and destruction in Charlottesville. These Nazis or whatever, they were extremists and they should have been dealt with and they and they were dealt with. And in the summer of 2020 when we had the shootings of cops that are killing black Americans, cops that are killing black Americans, not all cops are, you know, good cops. There are good cops and not all cops are good, but with anything else, you got good ones, you got bad ones. But then Antifa came to play and they stuck there and they came in there and they start going in protesting and causing riots in the summer for Black Lives Matter, causing destruction, causing carnage, causing buses, GRTC buses to go, go ahead and then being inferno, causes the statues in Richmond that we know of to be gone. Now, I was disgruntled about that because, you know, even though I'm not a history buff and even though I'm not a Civil War buff, that really had nothing to do with that because they have been there since 1920. So me being as a Democrat and probably me being a minority in this, being a Democrat, I did believe strongly that those statues had nothing to do with what was going on and they should have been kept in place. But yet they were removed by a mayor that is a horse's ass. The mayor that we have here right now, without naming his name, is a horse's ass that got reelected. Not going to get into that. I'm a Democrat saying that with a straight face. Now, let's move forward. So we got it here right now where you knew when the election was held, but two weeks before the election, you see a bunch of these Trumpsters waving their flag, waving these big, humongous flags and, and droves going by and clocking their horn and hoot nanny and all that. And they were doing practically the same things as the other protesters, not as, not as, not as bad, but just as bad enough. Blocking up the street, honking the horn and doing all that with the Trumpsters and all that for two weeks solid before the election. You knew with all the stuff that was going on there was a big divide in America. And it doesn't surprise me and it did not surprise me that Biden won. It was you can look at it and say that he should have won by a landslide. The election and the popular vote Biden won. A lot of the people had voted more than ever in this election. Black America voted, Latinos voted, Mexicans voted. They say, well, how did Biden get all these votes? How did, how did Biden, Sleepy Joe, how did Sleepy Joe get all these votes? Because people were told to come out. Black America was told to come out. And even though necessarily I don't particularly care for Camilla Harris, she has to win me over. I'm not a big Camilla Harris fan. I didn't like her overtures when she was calling Joe Biden a racist. I didn't care for that. When she made the overtures in the, and during the Democrat debate by calling Joe Biden a racist, I didn't care for that. I, did, I don't know why he cho chose her or chose her, but he chose her. So I'm not a big Camilla Harris fan. I didn't want Camilla Harris. But that being said, Joe Biden obviously knew what he was doing. 
and so he's got her as the VP, so we're going to give her a shot. All that being said, there was no foolishness. William Barr, the Attorney General to Donald Trump, had stated this himself that it was a fair election. They recounted the votes in Arizona, Michigan. Uh, yeah, recounted the votes in Arizona, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. And in Georgia, you would have not have thunk in a million years that it would actually have turned blue, but it did. So you look at everything for what it was and what it is. These states in question, they counted the votes two, three, four times, and it all came out the same freaking way. Joseph Biden was declared the president. Joseph Biden was declared the president-elect. And that was the bottom line to that scenario right there. So, here it is. All this is brewing. You didn't hear a word from Trump for a while. You didn't hear a word from Trump, but he had planned to go ahead and use January the 6th as the day of reckoning where he had to tell all his followers, the same followers he told to drink the bleach, drink the hydroxychloroquine, or inject the hydroxychloroquine within their, in their uh, veins, and drink the bleach, and drink the Tide Pods and all that, do all of that. <laughs> okay, and yet, because Trump was the Messiah, Trump was the Messiah to these people, Lord and Savior, if you will, and they went ahead and followed suit. But no, this is really no joke in matter. This is serious, though. These people would follow everything he said. They would follow every word and do everything he said. So it's kind of like an occult, if you will. Almost like a domestic terrorist. Dom domestic terrorist. And today, today, America looked like a third world country. You turn on the TV... You see it on ABC, CBS, and NBC. ABC, CBS, NBC, and you see it on the major networks, CNN, Fox, Fox News. Today, we embarrassed ourselves. This country embarrassed itself pretty much. We look like a third world nation. The, they finally did the run runoff in Georgia. The two Senate seats turned blue, so that poetically worked in the favor of the Democrats. Two seats in the Senate, two seats in the Senate, and they went blue. So it flipped it, and the Dems have controlling have control the House, and they control the Senate because obviously the VP is Camilla Harris, and then with that deciding vote, Camilla Harris has the deciding vote to go against whatever is being done and, and tip, it, tip it for the Democrats. So the Democrats are now in control. So ironically, on the same day, or on the eve, on the same night, when that happened, when the two seats in question turned blue, the two seats in Georgia and the Senate turned blue, this, this malaise, this circus, if you will, in D.C., and I'm not talking about the, the, the Washington Deadskins. I'm not talking about the Washington Deadskins. I'm talking about the circus that developed today in the White House. When I'm the White, when the White House or in the Capitol building, they start climbing up to the Capitol. They start climbing up onto the, the banisters where they're going to hold the inauguration in two weeks. They went up there. They went in here deliberately, and they busted the Capitol window. And there was under man, no police force, National Guard was not even there today. No National Guard. The National Guard was not even there. And they busted up the window to get in. So everybody, every, so everybody of the Senate and the, and the House and the Senate were pr pretty much all the congressional people were under their chairs, hiding. And really the police were under man. The National Guard, they had to bring up from Maryland and Georgia, I mean Maryland and Virginia, the guards to come up and come up there and try to remove these people. They went on Nancy Pelosi's office building. One person broke into Nancy Pelosi's office building and sat there with their feet propped up in the air. Feet propped up in the air, why not, smoking a cigar, smoking a cigar. And then you had one in the Capitol, in the, right, right there in the, in the house there, some guy, you know, on his phone, 
sitting in the, in the capital seat, right in the capital seat, right there with their, you know, sitting right there with his phone. So um, it might be funny to some people. It's not that was not funny. What happened today was not funny. One person, actually two people, got hurt. A lady got a lady got shot in the neck. Still unclear about how that happened. A lady got shot in the neck, and uh, a police officer got shot. So they were under under men. So everybody would have to take take hide or hide, and you know, and they were under men. And Trump didn't say a word. Trump was sitting in the White House watching it unfold. Just sitting there, not saying hardly anything. Just watching everything unfold to where it was. Yes. So he incited this. He orchestrated this. And these people were foolishly, foolishly led to go ahead and do stuff like this. Not thinking it out. Not realizing that they could be arrested. And I know that some were arrested. Not a, and a lot of those people went back home. They, they were in there. They're walking the Capitol grounds, walking in the Rotundo building, walking in the Rotundo area there, where all the statues are inside of the Capitol. And they're walking around like nothing ever happened, walking with the, in, the, in the Rotundo room and whatnot, walking around like nothing ever happened. And some of these people made it back home. Some of these people got arrested, and as well as they should have. The people that busted that window, the people that busted that window and climb, climbed in, hopefully, and I'm pretty sure they did get arrested, hopefully, and I'm pretty sure they, they did get arrested. When other countries look at this, and when they see stuff like this, it makes us look like a laughing stock. They want to claim and say that, oh, well, we don't want to live in a socialistic country. We don't. Well, maybe if we did live in a socialistic country, this crap wouldn't be happening. Now, mind you now, a lot of things in America, you have freedom of speech, and you have democracy, and, free, and this is what democracy is about. If democracy is about doing what we, what we saw on TV today, if you live in a socialistic country, you wouldn't have this crap happening. These people would be castrated. These people would be hung upside down by their damn balls and squeezed with a pitchfork and a, and a blowtorch. These people's blow their privates would be blown up on a blowtorch. This is what was out of hand. What happened today was out of hand, and the countries, even the other third world countries, look at what they see, look up to us, if you will, and they see the same thing that probably happens in their country, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in countries like that all around, countries in the Middle East, they have carnage and, and they have their own people revolting against the government burning down stuff well now today these third world countries in Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia and all that got to see some stuff that happening in, in America today and happening in the sacred sanctuary of the capital the, 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 the sacred sanctuary of the capital known as America and seeing that our own people that were acting like fools, climbing up the, the banister, climbing up the, the stairs to get into the White House, breaking up property, going on the outskirts of the, the White House, climbing up the stairs, climbing up the ladder, breaking windows and breaking property. And yet, that's accepted by a good majority of people thinking what's good for the goose is good for the gander. What happened in the summer and what happened today are both things that are disgusting and are just outrageous. What happened during the summer by Antifa and the Black Lives Matter group, the Black Lives Matter group and Antifa, and what happened today by the fact the sanctions in the group today was disgusting. Totally disgusting. Totally just, you know, dissent, dissent within, this, within this country. Anarchy, if you will. Total anarchy. We saw it today, and yet people were smiling and saying, "Oh, well, we did. We showed them." No, you showed your asses what what stupid people that you are. You showed us all right. You showed it how stupid and how melanical and screwed up in the head that you are. Now, none of this stuff is going to change the inevitable. 
Joseph Biden will become president whether you like it or not. So the Republicans need to bring it down a few notches. Even the Republicans today, even the elephant man, or excuse me, the turtle himself, Mitch McConnell, dissed himself from President Trump today. Now, when you know that that man is going to do something who is now the minority leader, and Chuck Schumer is the majority leader, hey, what else do you need to say? So, Mitch McConnell, the one that didn't give us the $2,000, Mitch McConnell, the one that wouldn't give us the $2,000, okay, when he's dissing himself from President Trump, then you know right then and there there's... <laughs> There's a lot to be said with that by itself. Okay? The minority leader, by the way, and of course, Chuck Schumer, the majority leader. When you have Lindsey Graham, <laughs> the red neck himself, you know, the red neck from South Carolina. When Lindsey Graham on the bewitching hour is finally denouncing himself from Trump, denouncing himself from Trump and saying, it's time to move on, you kind of get it in the bag. The only clonies, you got Ted Cruz here, that Batman villain, by the, it looks, looks like the Penguin, is the only one that is bannering for uh, banging the drum for Trump. And how ironic, because memory served me right, Trump belittled him during the debates in 16. And there, there he is, Ted Cruz, the Batman villain he is, the Penguin. He's the only one that's banging the drum for Trump. And he was, dis he was uh, demolished and uh, insulted back in 16 against Trump. So that's it. This goes to show you how bedroom partners and good time friends and bed, bedroom partners can lie with sleeping dogs lie together in the same same room. All of this is a disgrace to America. All of what we saw today was a total disgrace to America. I like to see more resolve with America. To see the thing about Bill Clinton and why I love Bill Clinton so much was he was a negotiator. Not only was he a great orator and a great speaker, Bill Clinton was a man that went across the way and talked to the opposition, was talked to the other side, and, you know, bargained with them. Gave a little bit, took a little bit. NAFTA was probably the most questionable thing that he did, if that. NAFTA was the most questionable thing he did. But Bill Clinton was a great communicator, and Bill Clinton was a great, nego great negotiator. And he was able to go ahead and give a little bit, and then Ted was able to take a little bit, and was well respected by his by the people, you know, the congressional people in the Senate and the House when he was president. Two-term president, two-term president, well respected, and he was pretty much did his job with the best economy this country ever had. The best economy this country ever had was under William Jefferson Clinton, and William Jefferson Clinton was the best living day president that we've had in this lifetime or in if you were born as a baby boomer generation x even with the even with the millennials bill clinton was the best living day president bill clinton was the best president we've had within 40 years was the best president we probably had within 30 to 40 years i'll say that probably next to jfk jfk and then bill clinton but i'll put bill clinton you know best living day president bill clinton the best president right next to jfk so, Trump could learn something from William Jefferson Clinton. Trump could learn a lot from William Jefferson Clinton. Trump can learn a lot from Joseph Biden. Because Joseph Biden today got up there and said, step it up. What are you doing? Tell these people. It took Joseph Biden to come out and address America the state, his disgust and his disgruntlement to what was going on today and told the president to step it up. They got, then got Trump to come out. But it took Biden to get him to come out. It took Joseph, the president-elect Joseph Biden to get President Trump to come out and say something to these people, his followers. And he was very weak upon telling them. And finally he told them, told them that it was a stolen election, blah, 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 go home. Stolen election, we worked hard, everybody's hurt, go home. Now, stolen election? <laughs> stolen election. No. It was a, an election that a lot of people had voted for. 
a lot of people had voted this election, and it was the most uh, participated election, even under, even compared to Obama. This election, Joseph Biden had more votes than even Barack Obama did, because more people came out. They wanted a change. More people voted because they wanted to change. They wanted to get rid of Trump. Even though Trump had a lot of followers and Trump had a lot of people that were voting, so did the opposition. Biden had a lot of people voting for him. A lot of people that necessarily didn't would, would not vote Democrat who voted for Biden. Biden had a lot of people. Biden had a lot of supporters. And Biden had a lot of people because they wanted him to be the next president. And it showed itself. No trickery, no switcheroo, no trickery and no switcheroo. It happened because it was divine intervention. It was divine destiny. Divine intervention, divine destiny for it to happen. Now we can sit here and spin it every which way you want, talking about this, but we have the right, American people, and we have the right to just, you know, protest. Yeah, you do have a right to protest, but you don't have the right to destroy property. And you could sit and say, well, they did it back in the opposition did it. Yes, they did. And they were part of the minority, just like you all are part of the minority. And QAnon, the most scariest, uh, how do we say this? QAnon is the new revelation, is the newest, uh, is the reincarnation of the teabaggers. But the thing with QAnon is they're both sick and demented people that follow the dogma of supporting a bunch of rhetoric. QAnon, these conspiracy theorists, are the most deadly, most just maniacal people you can think of that follow this dogma, that follow this horse shit that, uh, that pretty much is going on here that the teabaggers thought, but they're more dangerous, they're more terroristic. They're more dangerous people, they're more ter terroristic people too, domestic within our own country. Nothing worse. We can talk about uh, terrorists from, uh, from foreign ter terrorists. But when you have domestic terrorists, that's even worse. When you have foreign terrorists, that's really bad. We need to take care of it. But when you have domestic terrorist people like that, then that is a whole new ball of wax. So we need to be aware and vigilant upon what the QAnon is all about. Truth seekers, they're not. QAnon are not truth seekers. They are scariest, they're scariest terrorists. They're conspiracy theorists, and they're scary, scary, scary terrorists, and they're very much a malignant tumor to this country. And they're, they're conspiracy theories that believe in everything and make up stories about everything else. The ball the wax is, and the bottom line, and the brass tacks is, this finally caught up with Trump. And Trump lost the election. Now, if Trump had a clue, he would go ahead, dust himself off, bow out gracefully, and if he wanted to come back in 24, which he would have probably a snowball's chance in hell to do that too, because then people will know, then they would he would probably have a little smidgen of a chance since he was president. But a snowball's chance is the same. Now he has a now he has two chances. Slim the Nun, and Slim Whitman just went out the door. Slim the Nun and Slim Whitman just went out the door. In other words, what happened today pretty much ruined any hit, any more any history or ruined any future for Trump to come back and run again. But Trump knew what he was doing. Trump obviously knew that American people spoke and they wanted to change. They wanted a change, and they got it because of his. Let's face it, because of his, you know, fumbling the ball with the uh, pandemic, fumbling the ball with uh, COVID and all that. And people say, well, COVID was planted. And if COVID wasn't there, he would still be present. Maybe so. But COVID happened, and he, and he handled it piss poor. Did COVID cost Trump the election? Did, did COVID cost Trump a possible second term? It might have. But the fact that he fumbled it, the fact that he was so brazen to think it was a Chinese hoax, and so brazen to think that it was a 
the inside attack. It was a Chinese hoax and inside it's inside attack from the Dems, and it was all the Dems' fault. He pretty much that didn't help him. But there are a lot of people that didn't didn't want him in there again for a second term. There are a lot of people that already were determined that they didn't want him back in there for a second term. Already. So all that being said, you look at it for that, you look at it for this. And so did that cost? It might have. Was that the did that cost him? Yeah, it did. Might have cost him. But I don't believe that was the end all be end. Because you all had you had other problems, he other things that were going on that he was doing. Other, other shady stuff that he was doing. Not to mention the, the collusion with Russia. Not to, to mention the collusion with Russia, which we, are, we already know about, and the shady dealings with uh, Vladimir Putin. The shady deal, dealings with Vladimir Putin, and, of course, then, you know, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> is uh, attorney Rudy Giuliani, or Rudy Giuliani, you know? Rudy Giuliani, the, the crook that he is, yeah. So all that speaks for itself. So here we are. But today, if Trump had a single snowball's chance in hell, or had a slim pie or slim piece of the pie, he has some uh, uh, snowball's chance of hell anyway. But the fact that after today, after the actions that happened today, he has a snowball's chance in hell, a slim to none. And again, slim to none, and slim went out the door. Slim Whitman went, went, went out went out the freaking door. <laughs> Slim Whitman, old Sl old Slim Whitman reference. Look, uh, and yet people can say with a straight face, they can still revere him and love him after today. If I was one of those supporters, I'd be would be mad at myself. Not alone to be mad at being followed or let this person, you know, follow this person. I'd be, if I was one of those supporters, I'd be mad at myself. And I would be mad at following this person, putting him on a pedestal so high. Now, why is he on this pedestal so high? That is the question. They say he's an outsider. He was an outsider looking in the end and they wanted to change back. In, well, okay. So we see how that worked out. There's nothing really more to say about it. He was an outsider. That's what they wanted. And we saw, how, we saw how that outsider worked out. If you have a job that to be done, if you have, like, you want to get your hair cut, are you going to go to a plumber to get your hair cut? No. You're going to go to a beautician, a hairdresser, a hairstylist, which is going to cut your hair. He or she is going to cut your hair. If you got an issue with your roof, are you going to go to an auto mechanic to get your roof fixed? No. You're going to go to a roofer that knows what he's doing, how to fix the roof and the shingles and, you know, the house. You're not going to go to an auto mechanic to fix your house or fix, your, fix the roof on your house. Point is that maybe experience is what we needed. And again, the man that beat him the man that beat Donald Trump was the one that won the election. He was the only quali qualified Democrat that could have done that, and that was Joe Biden. So again, you can point the finger, you can say this, that, or the other, and while, you know, how could this happen? How could this be? Or is it in the Rush Limbaugh voice, Joe Biden won the election. I can't believe what we just happened. Whatever the case might be, <laughs> with, the, with the Rush Limbaugh voice saying, I can't believe that this just happened. But it did happen. And Joe Biden is the president. Any, if it was um, any other Democrat out there, they probably would have had a snowball's chance in hell to beat Trump. But Joe Biden had the best chance. He was the man for hire. He was the man that defeated Trump. And I called it. I called it for what it was, the way it is, and the way it was. That was the man that did what he needed to do. So we can play Monday Night Quarterback. Today, we need to take a good look at what happened. 
And we need to see with our own eyes that that things and there are things you do that have consequences. All things come to an end. So did the presidency for Trump. The presidency for Trump came to an end. And in two weeks, all this bannering, all this hoop nanny, all this other stuff going on right here, debating and arguing the point, ain't going to matter to a hill of beans. Because in two weeks, Joe Biden will be the next president of these United States. And that is the bottom freaking line. We can argue it till the cows come home, but it's most certain and it's most definite all this happened today is going to end up backfiring on Trump. It already hasn't. All the shenanigans, all the shenanigans, all the boastering and all this crap that happened today is going to backfire on Trump. It already hasn't. It's going to. And we can sit here and play Monday night quarterback. We can sit here and try to play Monday night quarterback. We can sit here and recount the votes that were blue in the face. Two things happened today of have significance. The Democrats won the Senate, and Trump made a horse's ass out of himself today. Repeat, the Democrats had won the Democrats. The Democrats had won the Senate with a tiebreaker going to Camilla Harris's pocket as the VP, and Donald Trump has destroyed any chance of him, any possibility now for 24 for him to come back, because he made himself like a horse's ass, and he made his, the supporters, a really a horse's ass also. The supporters have become a horse's ass. If not, dis would, you would think that they would become disgruntled. They would become disgruntled knowing that uh, what would happen, the fact that, you know, some of them had got arrested today. Some of these people actually probably have got got arrested today. You think of how their families would, would 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 like the fact to know that they got arrested, knowing that their families, you know, telling their families they got they, what they did, and then the, them getting locked up today. So there's a lot of people that know that probably are are mad at themselves as well. They should be, if they have any brain in their head, these people should be mad at themselves for what they did today. So you have a disgruntlement within the party. And the party itself, you have the major Republicans, Lindsey Graham, Mitch McConnell, oh my God, Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, and the rest of them. The ones, the, 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 the toters of Trump, the, the significant uh, toters of Trump that bang the, that bang the drums for Trump. Even the VP, Mike Pence. And Mike Pence said, constitutionally, I can't do what you're asking me to do. That right there speaks in volumes. Mike Pence, his buddy, his right-hand buddy, said, today, I cannot do what you are asking me to do. It's unconstitutional. That right there speaks in volumes. I tell you what, and it took Joe Biden to get Trump to do the right thing. Can you believe that? It took Joe Biden, it took Joe Biden to come on the air to get Trump to do the right thing. It took Joe Biden to come up there and say, "Step it up." And then finally, 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes later, Trump comes up and still talks to both sides of his mouth, and then finally tells the people to go home. And those people who were still there. Uh, in the White House until the dark, until it got dark near D.C. The circus was still going on in the dark, in the Capitol, excuse me, not the White House, but in the Capitol, while he was sitting there just looking at it, watching it on TV in the White House, sitting there enjoying it, eating his butter popcorn, watching it on TV. A lot of hypocrisy, a lot of foolishness, um, I honestly think that it's going to definitely give Donald Trump a black eye. It's going to give Donald Trump a black eye, and for him to even thinking about having a political uh, now, the smallest remote possibility of him having a snowball's chance of having a political future, 
getting a second term filled. Ain't gonna happen. You think that these followers are gonna go through that go through that rabbit hole again? If they have any brains, well, of course a lot of them don't have the brains. That's the ones that would probably go through that rabbit hole again. But the, the people that followed him, that who he lied to, his his supporters, you think they're gonna go through that rabbit hole again? The ones that don't have the brains, which a good majority of them don't have the brains, will probably go through it again, and it'll be more of a more more of the uh, the, the re episode, more of the uh, drama happening again. But the ones that are intelligent and the ones that knew the true, the truest, there that um, are conservative, the ones that are conservative and whatnot, and you know followed him because he was the nominee, he followed him because he was the one, are now are going to realize that uh, they made a blunder and they don't want to relive that episode again, or they don't want to relive that, uh, relive all that again, all that nonsense over again that makes no sense. So, um, honest to God, you look at it for what it is, he has, well, virtually he has ruined any possibility that he has. He has ruined any possibility that he has in the snowball's chance in hell. Has given him a snowball's chance now to ever run again. We have that little opportunity, that little door of opportunity. In 24, now it's gone. But he's not going to win it. Even if he didn't do that in 24, it wouldn't matter anyway, because we know that Biden was going to be a two term president. Biden will be the oldest president we have going into his 80s, and he'll be a two term president. And he will be going into his 80s, and uh, he will serve two terms two terms. So, within the span of 24 hours, a lot had happened today. But you know what? We have, we lived it. We saw it with our own eyes. And if anybody has been, you know, there's any question about Trump's true character, there should be no, no question about it today. The fact that, you know, any likability on Trump Anybody that with the small likability upon him being on the apprentice, on the apprentice, him being on the Howard Stern show and his feuds with Rosie O'Donnell that people thought that were funny and whatnot. Um, this man being president of the United States was funny, but funny in the wrong way. His feuds with uh, Rosie O'Donnell, we would, you know, he had all these feuds with Rosie O'Donnell and was going back and forth with the bantering and his, you know, Days when Howard Stern, when even Howard Stern himself had said that he was not qualified, not qualified to be president. And Howard Stern, you know, said that himself. And Howard Stern was supposedly his good friend, and he had said that. And, of course, you know, being on The Apprentice. Being on The Apprentice. Is anybody going to take this man seriously after this? After what happened today, after what happened for all of us to see? Is anybody in their right mind going to take this man seriously? No. He's ruined. POTUS, the, the POTUS, the P, what do you call it? The POTUS? Yeah, P, the POTUS. This guy is a lame duck. His career is ruined. You will not see any more of him. You might see him in a reality show, you might see him with his own syndicated conservative show <laughs> after if, if Limbaugh succumbs you know to his cancer um, Donald Trump will take over if Rush Limbaugh succumbs to cancer then you'll probably see Donald Trump maybe uh, doing like a surreal show or maybe doing a conservative show with the network or maybe he'll help Vince McMahon in wrestling Vince McMahon is going to need some help by the way because uh, after what they did on Monday Night Raw, I mean, I, I, that that right now that that pisses me off. They well, that's a different story for a different time. But the legends had came up there with Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan, and uh, these young these young twerps, no respect at all for the legends that paved the path for them. The WWE wrestling as we know it is going to probably go down the commode here soon. You don't, you don't disgrace a legend like Ric Flair or Hulk Hogan. Those two right there are legends. Two legends within the game. Two legends in the game, in the game of wrestling. And for these young uh, wrestlers to make a big stink or make a big uh, 
complain about the, or the people that paved the path for them. Vince McMahon is his just like like WCW and Jim Crockett Promotions. McMahon is going to be going under the under the wayside soon enough. Wrestling is not what we what we knew it was, and wrestling will not be what it is anymore. And we probably won't even see that anymore. But anyway, that's a different story altogether. Um, no. I saw this today, and I was glued to the TV set for two hours today. And this is something, you know, you can sit there where, you know, you've been watching the TV, and you're, you're glued to the TV, and you're listening to what they do. No. I didn't have to have anyone tell me what I saw. I didn't have any, I didn't have to have anyone tell me in words what I saw. I could see with my own eyes what was going on. This is the kind of world that we live in. This is the kind of world that we are in and about. And until we get it together, until we take, you know, responsibility for the actions, it's going to be an anarchy. And it's going to continue to be anarchy. These people, these Trump supporters need to take, take responsibility today for what they did and for their actions. This could be a good lesson a good lesson for these people to know what they did. This is something that needs to be looked at severely. This is makes us look like a laughing stock. What we saw, what I saw, what America saw today makes this country look like a laughing stock. Anyway, it's all for naught. Because in two weeks, Trump is gone. Trump will be gone, and Joseph Biden will be the president of the United States. That's the bottom line. Joseph Biden will be the next president of the United States, and we're going to, when you like it or don't like it, you're going to have to learn to accept it, like the, like America did the four years of Trump. The ones that didn't care for Trump had to accept it for four years. Now it's time for you all to accept it. It's time for you haters and naysayers have to accept it. And I do believe we'll get our $2,000 under uh, Senate Leader Chuck Schumer. We'll get our money. We'll get our $2,000 under Chuck Schumer uh, in a Chuck Schumer, uh, a Chuck Schumer majority Senate. The Dems are in control. That's the way it should be. The Dems are in control. And things are going to get probably a whole lot better, so we hope, so we know. All right, I just had to make put my spin on things and tell it the way it is. I feel like, uh, you know, sometimes you have to get serious. You know, life is not all about fun and games, even though, that, you know, it's nice to be able to escape a little bit and get into that mode. Life is not always about fun and games, but it's, it's able to be able to joke every now and then and be able to laugh a little bit. But today was no laughing matter. Today was very serious. So sometimes, you know, sometimes we have to get a little serious about it. If we want to be the best country we, we can be, we have to show examples. We have to show examples to the, our children, to the next generation, and to the kids that are following to show what we're about. If we want to show how dominant we are as a country. We have to show these other countries what the United States is about. We have to show our children what it is to be adult-like and to be able to be adult-like and to be able to compromise and be able to give a little bit and take a little bit and be rational. This is not the OK Corral. This is not an old West movie where you see you shoot him up, you know, slam him down, shoot him down, old, you know, John Wayne and you know, shoot him up, slam him down on John Wayne uh, novel or whatever, or some kind of um, western or whatever. This is true reality. This is the true reality that we live in. These are the times that we live in. And we need to be responsible for our actions. We as a country need to be responsible for our actions, and we need to worry about the domestic stuff that's going on here. The terrorists that are in the domestic Domestically speaking, in QAnon, there are a bunch of terrorists. 
say that with a straight face, QAnon are a bunch of terrorists that need to be dealt with. And they are the formulation of what the teabaggers and the Republican Party were about. And if QAnon is not dealt with, it's going to get worse. These are the people that believe in that horse shit, conspiracy theorists, conspiracy theorists and whatnot. QAnon needs to be dealt with because they're the ones, they're the terror, the domestic terrorists in this country. They believe in the in this conspiracy horse shit that they, they talk about. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, Joseph Biden is our president and I support him. President Joseph Biden. Joseph Biden is our president, and I, as an American, support Joseph Biden as my president. You should too. All right. One Mona Lisa, one Leaning Tower of Pisa, and only one gorgeous George. We'll be back. We'll be back onto normal, uh, normal circumstances. We'll be back onto a normal uh, lineup of circumstances with uh, more skits and more shows. Because guess what? I am Gorgeous George, and I am Gorgeous George, and pretty much this is what I do. Entertain the masses and speak the truth. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.